Yo, champs in the making! It's your boy Starmeister and Luap, aka the Pichu Bros, and welcome to another episode of the Pokemon Chronicles review series. Today, we'll be reviewing episode 18, The Search for the Legend. The episode originally aired on September 28th, 2004 in Japan, and on September 30th, 2006 in the US. So, with all that out of the way, let's get started on the recap. The episode begins with Richie and Sparky sailing on board the SSN until a horde of Gyarados appear in the middle of the sea. The passengers are panicking and the ship crew decides to take a detour to avoid the Gyarados. But out of nowhere, a strange man calls his Salamans to use Hyper Beam on the Gyarados, causing them to flee in fright. Richie is amazed with how this man easily scared those Gyarados, but the man says that those Gyarados are nothing compared to the Pokemon that he's about to face which is Moltres. The man's name is Silver and he likes to refer to Richie as Kid, Half Pint, or Short Stack. Suddenly, two very unsuspicious people approach Silver and they're said to be doctors from the bogus fake Institute of Science. It turns out that Silver is working with them on something, but they're hiding about it. The ship stops by an active volcano, which is actually Mount Ember in the Japanese dub, and Richie notices that Silver and the two doctors have deboarded the ship. And now, the ship is about to sail again, and what does Richie do? He recklessly hops off the ship like a mad lad. Richie catches up to them and insists on wanting to go with their Moltres expedition, but the doctors just deny it, saying that they're just there to study some rocks. Silver just laughs it off, knowing that Richie is never buying that lie. So this leaves the doctors no choice but to start explaining their real reason for being here. Based on their study, Moltres will appear on the island tomorrow, so they're trying to use the energy from Moltres' fire as a power source. And with the help of Silver battling Moltres, they may be able to get some of its fire. So Richie really really wants to go with them to see Moltres, but they still reject him, saying that they don't want a kid tagging along with them. Nighttime comes and Richie is still walking around the volcano looking for a place to stay until he suddenly hears the voice of the female doctor. He starts eavesdropping on the doctors and they seem to be talking to someone on the radio. Unfortunately for Richie, he steps on a piece of wood, catching the attention of the doctors, but he quickly hides from them. So the doctors continue talking on the radio until Silver comes in. They head back to their camp and Silver heads on to find Richie hanging on a cliff as if he exactly knows that he's there. Richie couldn't hold on any longer and falls, but luckily Silver Shikorita is strong enough to save them. Richie wastes no time and tells Silver that those doctors are suspicious and that he shouldn't trust them. But then Silver just brushes it off like he doesn't care and says that battling Moltres is all that matters and then proceeds to invite Richie to their camp. They have a good late night chat by the fire and Silver says that Richie reminds him of himself when he was a kid being reckless at all. Then Richie says that he can't help but get excited about things. He then mentions that he has a friend who's just like this, a Pokemon trainer named Ash. Silver reveals that he once got a glimpse of Moltres when he was young and since then finding and battling Moltres has been his ultimate dream in life. The next day arrives and Richie, Silver and the two doctors climb to the top of the volcano and it looks like it's about to erupt. Not long after, Moltres appears so Silver immediately sends out his Salamence to battle it. But it looks like Moltres' flame isn't as strong as usual and the doctors confirm that since it's Moltres' last stop in its flight pattern, it comes to this volcano when it's at its weakest. The idea of this causes Silver to lose interest saying that he doesn't want to battle Moltres when it's weak. This leaves the doctors no choice but to battle Moltres themselves. They send out Tentacore and Cloyster and then capture Moltres with their electromagnetic net. This maddens Silver and instructs Salamence to destroy the net. This time the doctors immobilize Salamence, Silver, and Richie with their net and they finally reveal who they really are. It's Cassidy and Biff. From Team Rocket, I should have known! Cassidy and Biff! I just told you it's Butch! Weren't you listening to my intro? Cassidy and Boing capture Moltres again, but Silver, Richie, and Salamence find a way to break free from their nets. Sparky attacks them with Thunderbolt and blasts Team Rocket off again. Moltres falls into the volcano, but Salamence is too late to save it. They are worried whether or not Moltres can survive the molten lava, but little do they know that the magma from the volcano actually restores Moltres' energy. Moltres rises from the magma like a phoenix rising from the ashes. Richie realizes that Moltres comes here whenever it's weak in order to regain its power. Now that Moltres is alive and kicking, Silver challenges it to a battle. First they show us a clash between Flamethrower and Hyper Beam, but Flamethrower overpowers it, dealing some damage to Salamence. Salamence then uses Double Team to confuse Moltres and follows up with a Dragon Breath and we see this amazing sight of Dragon Breath turning into the shape of Moltres. But just as it happens, the ground starts shaking, signaling the volcano is about to erupt. 
A large rock shoots to where Richie and Silver are standing, but luckily Mojo's there just in time to save them, meeting the rock with Flamethrower. Salamence brings them out to safety and Mochus flies into the clouds. In the end, Silver decides to stay in the volcano to train while waiting for Mochus' return. He finally calls Richie by his name and Richie boards the ship into the sunset. Now for our ratings and reviews. This episode marks Richie's final appearance in the Pokemon anime, which is pretty sad considering how he's one of the most significant rivals to Ash's story. Only second to Harrison. He continues his amazing detective operations, which I always love to see. There's something about Richie-focused episodes that make the viewer venture into the world of wonder and deep thinking, something that rarely happens in the mainline anime with Ash as the protagonist. I do think, however, that among the Chronicles episodes where Richie is the main protagonist, this one is the weakest one in that he didn't really do anything game-changing besides, you know, blasting Team Rocket off. But it was still a good character in that his curiosity and dauntlessness were highlighted very well. Speaking of, I really liked how Butch and Cassidy were portrayed as they managed to keep their disguises for the majority of the episode. And they were shown to be pretty smart and threatening while still being the lovable goofballs that they are. Silver is another great character that we don't often see in the Pokemon anime. He's passionate, persistent, reckless, and wants nothing in the world but to meet and battle Moltres. I like how they wrote the parallels between Richie's and Silver's personalities, and even related them to Ash's. All in all, I feel like the episode just wasn't the most exciting for me, and the ending of Silver not being able to have a proper battle with Moltres was kind of a letdown. I am giving this episode a 6 out of 10. The characters were great, but the story was pretty okay, making for an overall decent episode. The past trend of Richie focused episodes being bangers continues in this one. Richie is shown to be as persistent and clever as he always is by deciding to stay and follow up with what Silver and the Disguise Team Rocket were doing. Speaking of which, whenever Bren and Cassidy find their way into an episode, it always makes them more enjoyable as well. This Team Rocket and Richie go hand in hand very well since they're both slightly better in air quote than the original one that we follow on a day to day basis. This Team Rocket always does a good job at executing their plans and truly only get foiled to something very minor at the end. When it seemed like they were actually able to get Moltres and actually had Silver and Rich into the net, I was genuinely surprised. Of course, they then got destroyed, but that's another thing altogether. Richie's persistence and love of Pokemon shined in this episode, but this would sadly be his last appearance in the Pokemon anime series to this day. It would be really cool to see him appear more, especially showing off what Pokemon he's captured since then. Silver made a really good supporting character in this episode as well. I know there's a bunch of theories that he's actually Ash's dad based on this line. <laughs> It's just like this friend of mine, a Pokemon trainer named Ash. Uh, Ash? Yeah. Regardless, he was a strong batter whose love for Pokemon was bigger than anything else. This episode is also the only episode ever in the anime to be based on the Sevi Islands, which is pretty cool. Yeah, in the Japanese version, it's actually confirmed to be Mount Ember, where you catch Moltres in the Fire and Leaf Green games, but it's called Mount Magma the dub for some reason. With all that being said, I'd be giving this episode an 8 out of 10. So yeah, there was a review and recap for episode 18 of Pokemon Chronicles, The Search for the Legend. If you enjoyed this video, then I highly suggest you subscribe to both our channels. The links are found in the description below. For the next episode of this review series, that will come out next week on Luap's channel, so you're gonna wanna head over to his channel to check that out. Or if you want, you can click the playlist that we made and find all the episodes neatly there. Until next time, thanks for watching and the Pichu Bros will gotta catch ya later. Let's go! We've gotta hurry up and get to the top before we miss it! What do you mean, uh -huh. we? As much as we would really love to have a little kid tagging along with us, we can't have a little kid tagging along with us. It's way too dangerous.